On a blazing afternoon in Ahmedabad, a fully loaded Boeing 787 lifts off the runway, its engines roaring with power, its destination set for London Gatwick. Everything seems perfect until it isn't. Just seconds into the flight, the aircraft veers off course, plummets, and explodes into the side of a university building, killing all 242 souls on board. The official preliminary report calls it a tragedy. But now, new simulations and evidence from black box data are raising questions too uncomfortable to ignore. Questions that point straight at Boeing's cockpit design, at systemic oversight failures, and at the chilling possibility that this crash could have been prevented entirely. What happened inside that cockpit? Why did the engines shut down mid-air? And why does the official report seem to miss one critical, damning detail? In this video, we'll break down the reconstructed flight, moment by moment, and reveal what the report didn't say out loud, but that every pilot, investigator, and engineer now fears to be true. Stay with us, because the truth about Air India 171 is far more disturbing than you've been told. On June 12, 2025, Air India Flight 171 is scheduled to depart from Ahmedabad to London, one of the key routes connecting India to its massive diaspora in the UK. The weather is warm, the skies are clear, and conditions are stable, perfect flying weather. On board, 230 passengers, ranging from business travelers to entire families. In the cockpit, Captain Sumit Sabarwal and First Officer Clive Kunda, both experienced, competent, and intimately familiar with the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. From breathalyzer tests to checklist procedures, everything checks out. At 1.18 p.m., pushback begins. The plane is heavy but well within operating limits, loaded with 54,000 kilos of fuel. The runway is long enough. The engines spool up with that unmistakable Dreamliner whine. And as the plane taxis to the edge of runway 23, no one, not even the pilots, has any reason to suspect that their flight will end in flames just two minutes later. As the Dreamliner barrels down the runway, the data appears textbook. V1 is reached at 153 knots, VR at 155, V2 at 162. The aircraft lifts off at exactly the speed predicted by the manual. But within seconds, something bizarre happens. The plane begins to deviate slightly left. It's subtle, at first, but then it dips. And then, the black box records something that sends chills through any aviation expert's spine. Both fuel cutoff switches are moved to the off position. The engines die. The plane, just gaining altitude, is suddenly gliding. Pilots begin pulling the yoke back, trying to recover. The data shows they fought till the end. But at only 55 feet off the ground, there is no time, no chance. What causes twin fuel switches to be flipped mid-air? Boeing says it's impossible without human intervention, but the report confirms. The physical switch is moved. Not software, not malfunction. Something or someone moved them, and it happened in the worst possible moment. A high-resolution 3D simulation of the entire flight, built frame by frame using CCTV footage, Google Maps, and modeling tools, reveals something disturbing. According to the official timeline, the aircraft hits maximum speed, 180 knots, and then the engines shut off. But the simulation shows something different. The speed keeps climbing even after the engine supposedly shut down, peaking at 196 knots. This suggests the engines were still providing thrust for several seconds after the report claims they were cut. That discrepancy casts doubt on the official sequence of events. Why would the plane continue to accelerate after losing power? Jet engines don't coast, they stop producing thrust almost instantly when cut off. The fact that acceleration continued raises uncomfortable questions about when the cutoff actually occurred, and more importantly, whether the report is downplaying something intentional. The Boeing 787's fuel cutoff switches are not supposed to be easy to activate. They're spring-loaded, they're guarded, they have mechanical stops. In other words, accidental activation is supposed to be impossible Yet both switches were triggered within one second. That almost entirely rules out accident. And the TCMA system, which automatically reduces thrust during emergencies? It doesn't affect these cockpit switches. The engines restarted later, which means TCMA wasn't responsible. There's only one possibility left. Manual activation by someone in the cockpit. 
and that someone had to move both switches within one second. Is it possible that a confused pilot hit the wrong switches in panic? Or worse, a deliberate act? The simulator shows the plane climbing, then dropping just as both switches go off. The recorder confirms the physical movement. And yet, the official report offers no conclusive cause, just silence. Meanwhile, the design flaw remains. The switches are still there, still vulnerable, still able to bring down a plane in under 90 seconds. In the days after the crash, aviation analysts began dissecting the flight's telemetry second by second. But something didn't add up. As the investigators re-watched the simulation, one frame stood out. Frame 179. At that exact moment, the aircraft's nose was still pitching up, as if the pilots were actively fighting to keep it airborne. The engines, supposedly off, were still showing pressure ratios suggesting partial thrust. And then, suddenly, a frame later, both engines go flatline, and the plane nosedives. The question is simple. How can engine cutoff occur after maximum climb rate, not before? One explanation offered was sensor error. Another claimed it was a glitch in the data overlay. But as engineers dug deeper, they found no technical justification. The simulation wasn't wrong. It was exposing an inconsistency in Boeing's own timelines. And if that's true, then the problem isn't just in the cockpit. It's in the story being told after the crash. One hypothesis surfaced in confidential safety circles and caused immediate unrest, the phantom button theory. Some Dreamliner engineers believe a rarely documented design quirk could allow both fuel switches to be disabled simultaneously via a secondary failure, an electrical short triggered by feedback loops in the aircraft's avionics bay. The Boeing 787's layered system is supposed to isolate such faults, but internal reports have suggested that if power fluctuations occur during a very specific throttle configuration, something matching the exact setup in AI-171's takeoff, the logic gates could misinterpret electrical current and trigger physical switches without direct human input. Boeing has never publicly confirmed this vulnerability, but a now scrubbed patent filed in 2016 described a system suspiciously similar to this scenario. Was it ever tested in extreme conditions? Is it still embedded in thousands of active 787s? If true, this wouldn't just be a fatal oversight. It would be a hidden time bomb in modern aviation. Beyond the mechanical theories, there lies a darker, more human possibility, one the official report dances around, but never fully addresses, intentional sabotage or psychological failure. Aviation history is littered with tragedies rooted in mental breakdowns, but what makes AI-171 unusual is the absence of any behavioral red flags. The captain had no disciplinary record. The first officer had passed all psychological evaluations, but the data paints a chilling alternative. If both switches were activated manually, it had to be by one of the two pilots. Could panic have caused a catastrophic mistake? Or is there a more unsettling possibility that one of them knowingly disabled the engines? The timing, less than 60 seconds after liftoff, suggests premeditation. But if so, why? No suicide note. No erratic communications. Just cold silence. It's as if the motive disappeared with the aircraft, leaving behind only two fingers, two switches, and a mystery no one dares solve aloud. When the preliminary findings were released, Boeing issued a statement offering condolences and reiterating their commitment to safety. But the statement was oddly generic. No mention of the switches, no clarification on system redundancy. And most importantly, no promise to redesign the components now at the center of the investigation. Behind closed doors, whistleblowers claim internal meetings flagged the fuel cutoff switches as priority level hazards as early as 2021. The problem? A redesign would involve recertification across the global fleet, grounding hundreds of jets and costing billions. So the switches stayed, the design stayed, and the silence stayed. Instead of answers, investigators received layers of legalese, deflections, and delays. The official report ends with a vague phrase, the probable cause remains under examination. But for families of the victims and for aviation watchdogs around the world, that's not good enough. Not when 242 lives were lost in under two minutes. Not when Boeing's silence speaks louder than the engines ever could. In aviation, there's a saying, 
Every crash writes a message in fire across the sky. And Air India 171 screamed one thing louder than anything else. This didn't have to happen. Not with those switches so exposed. Not with that electrical vulnerability left undocumented. Not with simulations showing thrust when there should have been none. And certainly not with silence from the people who knew it was possible. What the official report dared not say outright is what the evidence screams between the lines. This wasn't a tragic anomaly. It was a systemic failure. A failure of engineering. A failure of accountability. And a failure of courage to tell the truth when lives depended on it. 242 people died in 87 seconds. Not because of a storm. Not because of enemy fire. But because a multi-billion dollar company weighed cost against lives. And blinked. And that's what destroyed Boeing. Not the crash. The choice to ignore the warnings before it ever happened. We call it a report. But it's really a tombstone. A record of what happens when design flaws are buried beneath paperwork. When warnings are redacted. When responsibility becomes a ghost in a boardroom. And until that changes, until every cockpit is built with failure in mind and honesty at the center, this won't be the last time we watch a jet fall out of the sky and ask the same terrible question, what else are they still not telling us?